Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Q&A with us, the British Fist. Catching as my mouse falls down and I pick it up. We are the British Fist. Catching. I am Mr. Parkin. and this guy leaning into the Q&A is NJ. What's up? If you have any questions, you know where to put them down in that comment section below. That is the most likely place where we are going to see your questions. And the thing is, we've got a big load of questions right in front of us, but we always want more. We're greedy like that. Yeah, we are very greedy. It's a British thing. Although we do like to queue up for things. So we're greedy, Sorry, but we yes. don't mind queuing up for it. And we apparently we have bad teeth. I don't really know how that works. I mean, I don't really see how my teeth are bad, but there you go. Colezilla25 starts off this Q&A. Do you think... St uh, this would be a previous question, but we'll answer it anyway. Do you think that Stinker returned this Monday on Raw after he recently tweeted 71414 on Twitter? Even though I saw that, I didn't think for one second that they would actually bring back Sting on that particular day. I mean, what would have been the point? It was In the end, it was for a video game, wasn't it? As much as doing those video packages for people's debuts has worked well in the past, even with the like of Sting coming back to the WWE, it's like with Hogan and Flair. They don't have any real reason to win, so the hype of a video game not really benefiting the actual WWE War and Smackdown. However, I believe it will benefit the advertising of the video game, which will hopefully bring in more revenue for WWE in that sense. What would you feel about a Bray Wyatt-Kevin Steen match at WrestleMania 31 for the IC title in the ladder match? I think that by then the duo could work up a great storyline between now and WrestleMania, and it would also give them a time to get bigger, better, and get some heat. I also feel having a match like this would give a lot of importance to the IC title again. I... I applaud your creativity there, but I think it's a bit early right at this moment to consider that Kevin Steen will actually be on the main roster, never mind being on a WrestleMania card and fighting for the IC title. If you said WrestleMania 32, then maybe, but not WrestleMania 31, even though I, I do like the idea, but it really depends on how WWE and NXT present Kevin Steen. He's not going to be the ROH Kevin Steen, where he's going to be throwing F-bombs and stuff. He's going to be a PG version of Kevin Steen. Would you like to see a PG version of Kevin Steen on WWE TV, really? My few thoughts about this quickly is why are you pairing up Bray Wyatt and Kevin Steen? Is it because they're big guys? Is it because they're big? So, so mean also, like that. Our fans, yeah. big guy versus big oh. To be honest with you, though, a big guy versus big guy match, you know, in ROH, I would be all for. In a Michael match. Elgin. In a ladder, yeah, well, Michael Elgin versus Kevin Steen was a great match in ROH. Much better than Davey Richards versus Elgin. Fuck that match. But anyway, yeah. Also, Bray Wyatt should surely be higher up than the IC title, really, at WrestleMania 31. So should Cesaro. Well, yeah, but Bray Wyatt more so because he's actually been presented as a main event guy. So Thanks to Cena. I don't know whether I like that idea too much. I don't know whether it's realistic or not. I prefer Bray Wyatt to be much higher up, personally. The Neon Brick. When do you think Batista will return and what kind of feud will he be in? Well... There's doubts whether he's actually going to return at this point. I mean, he's had very good success with the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. A lot of people have been praising his performance, and a lot of people are thinking that he may not even come back to the WWE now. What would be the point if he's going to be such a big movie star and have such a big name in Hollywood? Well, if he's got a year contract, I think well, he two should... Two years, isn't it? Well, I'm not sure what he got. I think it's two years. I think he should still come back and fulfill that. Not for every... not do Don't do a Brock Lesnar, but I think he should still make a comeback. And with Brian being injured... You should feel, ha, ah, so now Brian is not going to take my spot. Oh, that's good, that's good. I'm not going to have Brian cheers because I'm here. And then and Brian comes back as soon as he comes back. That would be bad, yes. <laughs> but Brock Lesnar needs bigger opponents in the possible remaining year, possibly next. Hell, and there's rumours that I believe apparently Vincent Mann is pitching for Brock Lesnar versus Batista at WrestleMania 31, whereas Triple H is, is making a case for Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. I mean, from a drawing standpoint... Batista versus Brock Lesnar could be one hell of a match, but it can't really be for the title. In my opinion, anyway. Batista will never get his title match. No, never. Where do you see Tyler Breeze being on the main roster? Jobber, mid-card, main event, or authority? Um, He'd probably get a push for about a month and then be a jobber and then go back to NXT. I, I just... I like the Tyler Breeze character. I just can't see that character going very far in WWE. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe when they, they, they does get brought up, maybe I'll be proven wrong, but I'm just not sure about the character. As much as I do like to give the WWE credit on ideas they come up with, it's when they start to add a different kind of character than just a built-up mm. wrestler, things don't work out for them. So it looks like the same thing could happen to him. And also, you got to remember, whenever WWE bring a new guy, how many... 
guys have I seen that flourished on NXT, and I thought, great, these guys are going to be really good on the main roster, and apart from maybe Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns and The Shield, you know, they haven't really prospered all that much, and I'm thinking to myself, what's the point of bringing them out of NXT when it doesn't seem like you really have any kind of long-term plan for them? I mean, you look at a guy like Tyler Breeze, he'll be in a feud, and then next minute, WWE won't know what to do with him, and they'll give up with him, just like they did with Bo Dallas and fucking Adam Rose and other characters like that. It's an unfortunate truth. Trey Top Dog Ellis. Do you think the original plan was for the Rock Cena program to culminate at WrestleMania 30? If so, how much of the decision do you attribute to poor fan reaction or Rock's injuries? Mm, I think it was going to culminate actually at uh, Extreme Rules 2013. Yes, Extreme Rules 2013. But I think it was mostly, I mean, it did great business. I mean, WrestleMania 28 and 29 were, one of the high, were two of the highest grossing, I believe, WrestleManias of all time. Uh, just ahead of WrestleMania 23 with Donald Trump and Vincent Mann. I mean, there was massive poor reaction, but massive poor fan reaction, excuse me, but you can't deny how much business that did. Also, Rock was injured, so they couldn't do a rematch. And then I think it just got to a point where Rock just didn't really see the point in coming back in WWE, really. Sadly, there's been many stories, just like other things that have happened in the past, that made reason why they didn't do the match at Extreme Rules or another match. There's been rumours that Rock was unhappy that he had to lose the Cena. Why did he have to lose the Cena? I mean, the way he lost. Injury. Yeah. There's just so many different stories. And I personally think they would have had a finale match at Extreme Rules. And then Rock may have gone off to face someone else or gone off to do what he has done. Movies. Well, a lot of people have, were predicting, actually, that they were going to set up Rock versus Brock at WrestleMania 30. And that was going to be the big drawing main event. But... um. That probably won't happen now. Did Batista's return flop in part because fans have part-time fatigue and couldn't get behind a third part-time at WrestleMania main event in a row? I think Batista's return flopped because, number one, Daniel Bryan was so popular and a lot of people wanted to see Daniel Bryan in his spot. And number two, a lot of people just didn't think he was, you know, he was in shape or was in ring shape or was written. They just didn't really like him coming back and winning the Royal Rumble straight away and, you know, taking a potential spot away from Daniel Bryan. Thank God that that wasn't the case and Daniel Bryan actually went on and won as, you know, that was what most of the fans wanted by the sounds of it. That's what I felt too. Even though I enjoy especially the evolution part of Batista, I think when he came back, the fact he didn't seem like himself, look like himself, I think the reaction just was like, you know, who's this guy? And obviously with Brian being the one they wanted to see going for the championship, there's just so many things going against Batista. Yeah, but not to mention the fact that um, Batista is just much better as a heel. I mean, we saw how much better he was as a heel during his run with WWE+. Plus, you know, like I said, he, is a, he did sign up for house shows and he did sign up for a two-year contract. So he wasn't really a part-timer, only in the sense that he was going to promote movies and stuff. So... He wasn't necessarily a part-timer, but I see what you mean about part-time part -time of fatigue. You've got Brock Lesnar, Triple H, you know, Undertaker at the time. Like, loads of people who were just part-timers that were taking up big money-making spots in the WWE at the time, rather than the young guys raising up, even though it did seem that way. Sin City 2100, 2100. What do you think of HBK's overselling in his match with Hogan at SummerSlam 2005? While it may have been hilarious at the time, it was incredibly unprofessional. The way I see it is that you've got two guys who, even though I can give HBK more credit than uh, than Hogan, I think they both felt that they were the big stars in that match and didn't want to do justice for the other person, which may have made the match entertaining, but like said, it really weren't the way a wrestling match should go down. Well, it really, it was the case that Hulk Hogan wasn't going to be around for much longer afterwards. He had, you know, from a money drawing potential, he probably could draw a bit more money than Shawn Michaels. But Shawn Michaels was there till 2010. So really, if Hulk Hogan was not going to be there for much longer and not really going to be there on a very... It was just going to be there on a part-time basis, HBK had to win, really. But, you know, politics and these two are probably one, two of the bigger politickers in the WWE. And, well, Hogan won because Hogan always wins. Hogan always knows best. UH Type 1. If CM Punk had returned to the WWE, do you think that Daniel Bryan would lose his WWE spot as a main eventer and most of his fan base? I think Daniel Bryan would still be a key figure in the WWE and still be a very over baby face. Um, but CM Punk would probably be in a higher spot than Daniel Bryan, especially at this point where Daniel Bryan is injured and WWE would probably want the star power. 
I, the way I see it is that I think Brian's overness, even without the yes, 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 or his style in the ring changing, the thing that I think will benefit is the WWE cannot seem to write three main event feuds, not really in a way. I think the fact that Brian would be second to CM Punk. Yep, I think so too. Uh, if, especially going into like a WrestleMania season where money is very important. Do you think that CM Punk's value as a main eventer will increase now that he's gone and that the, the, the fans probably would want to see him back? Or do you think it would have just stayed as it is really if he just stayed with the WWE? I think CM Punk, like he said before, he felt that he had accomplished everything that was mm. being thrown at him. There really weren't much of a step up. There's, again, stories about the Brock Lesnar match. There's stories about the Triple H match he would have gone into. So I think CM Punk, I think things would have stayed the same even if he did stay. He would have gone through the same matches he already done, been unhappy. And I think products, he would have come up with a new shirt every few months, but <laughs> nothing else. As you do with CM Punk. Um, Tim Crace, do you think WWE should bring back War Games? It's not a bad concept to bring back, but is it completely necessary? I don't think so. Maybe as a one-off thing like Hell in a Cell, you could do it back when, you know, it's a WCW thing. And you know WWE aren't going to really acknowledge WCW. I don't think it's really needed. Do you think that WWE should get rid of Money in the Bank and Hell in a Cell? To a degree, we, we think definitely Hell in a Cell, because that match type should be saved to end big feuds. And Money in the Bank, we would prefer to see at WrestleMania, wouldn't we? So, yes to that question. Although Hell Money in the Bank is usually a pretty good pay-per-view. Hell in the Cell, straight away, I think even if it does not, if it stops being a pay-per-view, they've already ruined it now. They've already made multiple Hell in the Cells that should not have been mm. Hell in the Cells. So I think the whole Hell in the Cell match has been not the same for a few years now. Money in the Bank, as much as you could compliment the pay-per-view matches we've had, I think WrestleMania needs as much speciality as it can, and Money in the Bank gave it that. It just gave a guaranteed opener spot fest that the crowd were going to get into. As part from, let's say, having your World Heavyweight Championship open. Just saying. What WWE pay-per-view do you think WWE should get rid of? I mean, we said Hell in a Cell, and that's a pretty standard one, I think. If, if I had to throw some more in, Elimination Chamber, because I felt that was a good speciality like the Hell in a Cell... Mm. You could say, um, I'd say the fact they've got 12 pay-per-views a year, just minus another one to replace it. Yeah, what, which factions would you like to see WWE bring back? I mean, obviously the Shield at some point will come back as a, a group. Um, yeah. Any particular factions? Uh, I mean, DX may be on a temporary basis, but nothing major. I mean, Well, they think of doing the Shield and DX, possibly whatever DX members they can get, and then the Shield, because they haven't had that match. So I wouldn't mind those two. What, uh, Billy, what when Billy they do when they bring back the shield, they're thinking the reason of doing that because why bring back a, another faction when there's no other faction? Yeah, that's when they bring back DX. That's so it'd be Triple H, Road Dog, and Billy Gunn, or someone. I'm not sure who the three the DX part will be. Don't know. I don't like that idea really. Uh, they've already done it with New Age Outlaws, so just no. WWE and TNA talk. What do you think of a Sting? What do you think of Sting finally signing a deal with WWE? I mean, we don't really know. I mean, it, it looks like he has, and he may wrestle one more match, which I guess, considering the fact that he's never been in WWE before, will draw a little bit of money. Um, so I'm kind of interested just to see what direction WWE would actually go with Sting. I think a Bray Wyatt match would be perfect for a Sting coming in for one last match, but I'm not buzzing about it, put it that way. Then again, I'm not really buzzing about anything in wrestling apart from NXT right now. As much as Bray Wyatt, again, if they can bring Bray Wyatt up to be a credible opponent for Sting, because after what we've seen on previous oh, Raw, Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family are not in a good spot right now. So my opinion on Sting that the Wyatt family is, just like Hogan and Flair, the WWE are just giving up money for free. Just don't do anything. Just here, take this money, take it. We, we've got loads of it. To plug the WWE Network. But here's my thing. You're bringing Chris Jericho to work with Bray Wyatt, and he's in a worse spot than he was before he actually feuded with Chris Jericho. Just stupid. What do you think of the AJ Lee pay feud? It's probably the best feud the Divas have, really, and it's probably going to last, what, one more pay-per-view, you'd imagine? I'm disgusted with the way that Natalia has fallen so far when she could have been a top base against these heels coming in. But as for these who you've spoken about, I think it's the hottest thing they've got going. And yes, they should try and bring out 
multiple match types like submission, submission the tease hair as a hair match or just something that these two could provide that other divas have failed but I think once they've drawn in wins and stuff there'll be one more match and then finished yeah that's the best feud the divas have really Adam Cahella what do you think of the top five in-ring performers of all in all of WWE including NXT at the moment right Cesaro great in-ring performer Sami Zayn, another great in-ring performer. Adrian Neville, another good in-ring performer. I think you have to include... Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is another great in-ring performer. I think you also have to include there Daniel Bryan, even though his, his, even though his uh, style will be somewhat limited. I mean, there are loads of... I mean, it really depends. I mean, in-ring performers, but I'd say there are lots of good workers in WWE. Like, you look at a Brock Lesnar, just brings a speciality about the way he wrestles... Um, you look at, you know, there are many wrestlers that have their individual styles, but, you know, when you talk about in-ring performing, I imagine you mean, in a sense, like five-star matches. Dean Ambrose would be another one of them. There are quite a lot in the WWE. I mean, obviously, CM Punk was one of them at the time uh, before he left. So that's a couple there. If you have any, please add, I mean, unless you can think of any more. So well, right now, the fact you're going WWE mm. performers. Ziggler. Uh, Ziggler would definitely be one that is considered mm. a performer, even if he does get criticism for it. But performers, yes, there's not really... There's more characters yeah. that we can name than... I mean, Bray Wyatt things. has been in two of the best matches of the year, so you could include Bray Wyatt in that list. I wouldn't call him a good wrestler, that's just me. No, yeah. well, he has his unique style, but what I'm saying is he, if you've been involved in, like, two four-star matches in WWE or three or whatever, then clearly you're doing something right. It depends on your, on your dance partner, but there you go. Robert Hernandez. What do you guys think WWE should do with SmackDown to fix the show to match Raw and uh, that way we don't see SmackDown as a B show but as their equal? I don't really know. Uh, I mean, I've given up watching SmackDown now. I just... I don't think... I mean, even if WWE wanted to make it a special show, they can barely, you know, make their Raw show feel like a big show. So what's the point in doing it with SmackDown? With Raw being three hours, I think... And it's a super show. I think... Raw could have the SmackDown matches. Just use your time better on Raw. Make SmackDown slot the NXT slot if they can find to allow NXT to be TV deal where SmackDown is to get that more publicity while the Raw and SmackDown matches are combined into one show. Issue there is that they tried to put NXT on cable and they have not been very successful, which is why it's exclusive to the WWE Network. Plus. SmackDown, as it's been as it's two hours, brings in more ad revenue, so they're going to keep that there. They're not going to replace it with NXT. As much as I would love to see it, I don't think it will happen. Jack Johnson is going to uh, is going to play out this Q and A with two questions. With so many smaller guys on the WWE roster, should they bring back the cruiserweight title to ensure more athletic matches? No, I'm not really sure. There's much point in a cruiserweight title. I mean, I do agree on the smaller guys thing. There are a lot of them. Um, but really, you should be trying to make these guys into credible mid-carders and or potential main eventers, considering how over some of them are. That's the reason why they got rid of the Cruiserweight, so they kept the wrestlers fighting for the actual mid-card, have more feuds there. But as we've said in multiple times, the WWE are struggling to write feuds for anything other than the top selling matches uh the way it has always been in wwe but apart from vince russo we like to uh have a story for every single character and you know that kind of that kind of worked at the time and also there's no real elevation with the cruiserweight title once you're in the cruiserweight division you're not really going to go above that are you um apart from if you're like a Rey mysterio or someone special like a jericho with there being many talents that are underutilized should wwe bring back the brand split and have only the ic and wwe title on raw and have the us and divas title on smackdown to highlight more wrestlers no because the shows would be awful there would be even more filler on the show and even more crap and it would be even more boring and even more people would stop watching it like me Jack Johnson, I like how you're trying to bring back things that used to work, but the WWE's writing has slipped up over the years. The wrestlers are choosing to probably not compete as much or they're liking the way things are right now. So I just don't think it would add up to being able to produce two shows with two different storylines for each show. Also, if you said to someone, right, Raw, we have Intercontinental and WWE Championship. On SmackDown, we have US and Divas title and maybe the tag titles. I'm pretty sure everyone would probably watch Raw and SmackDown's ratings would plummet. 
That's Pretty it. sure. And the raw rating wouldn't really improve, would it? Not at all. But there you go. That's another Q&A with us, the British list, of course. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to put them in the comment section below. That is the best way for your question to get seen. We sometimes see them on Facebook, but they get lost in the shuffle. We sometimes see them on Twitter, but they get lost in the shuffle. Sometimes we see them on our own box, but yet again, they get lost in the shuffle. So please comment your questions below if you want them to be seen on and heard and answered in our Q&As. And thank you very much for watching. Tune in for our next Q&A. Please enjoy the rest of your week. And for Mr. Parkin and me, NJ, thank you very much once again. And goodbye.